Alrighty, lads, you clicked on the video, but first off, let's get this clear. This doesn't mean I like Age of Sigmar. It is instead an explaining of why I am finding it appealing. Explaining what Age of Sigmar has that is marketable. Explaining what it has that is driving players to play it. You see, there is a lot wrong with it. There is. There's, there's a lot. But it's doing so many things right that a lot of players are flocking to it. I'm not joking. I will go to a games workshop store and it is pretty much all people play. Not playing 40k or Warhammer Fantasy old rules. No, they're playing Age of Sigmar. Which again is very interesting for an old savage old shaman like myself. Because, you know, I'm still having a hard time getting into it. So, let's go over what it is that's making it so good. So, first off, Age of Sigmar has a fantastic setting that allows some high fantasy gameplay. It is about gods waging war on each other. And that, to me, is like the greatest part of this whole series. The greatest thing about this particular genre is that, you see, I used to play a game in 2003 called Wrath Unleashed. W-R-A-T-H Unleashed. It was the same concept. Gods waging war over each other for territories that they could easily just make out of nowhere. Now, some gods may be dominant, but really there was no way for a god to quote-unquote win, which made it an eternal struggle for dominance. And in that, you can see a lot of potential. There's infinite replayability. And it was just awesome as hell seeing the god of fire fighting the god of earth. And they're just fighting each other, just kicking ass. Their demons are going at it. That's really cool. Age of Sigmar is just that. It is just them fighting infinitely. Because you see, with Age of Sigmar, it's not really restricted like Warhammer Fantasy. In Age of Sigmar, you can have a great city fall. A city in this immaterium that was holding off hordes of enemies, all of a sudden it falls, and it could be devastating for the faction that loses it, but it's not a game changer. It doesn't change much of anything. It just gives the players a new scenario. It gives the players a chance to rise up to the challenge. It gives the players something interesting to look at. Now, you see, this basically makes it where the game is infinitely replayable, but it also makes it where the lore and the setting is a lot like Chaos and Orcs back in Warhammer Fantasy. Because you see, the whole drive for why I like Orcs and why I could enjoy Chaos and why many other players did was that the whole point of it was that it's endless. It was just endless replayability. You can have infinite chances for both the player and the book readers to see an individual rise to fame, carving a name for themselves in this endless bloodshed. One day your orc warlord dies, but the next day another orc warlord you have, shit Stila the greedy finger, all of a sudden beats a demon prince of corn, now elevating your warlord to god tier status. His name is forever known in the chronicles of history. That right there is just, that's just entertaining as hell. I, I can't quite say it any differently. That's the whole drive behind why people like Chaos and Orcs, is the idea that you can carve your name out of this endless battle of chaos. But now you apply that to all the factions. Now you could play as Sigmar, as the Sigmarites, and just have one of your champions rise because he did an amazing job smiting some Nurgle demon and now he can be known as I don't know just some random name like Grimmelkin the purge slayer like dude that's awesome that is awesome that it's such a open fantasy and it's so new that now you could pretty much create your own lore again we couldn't really see this much with Warhammer Fantasy. Warhammer Fantasy had a more stable setting. It had a much different setting where not too much could really change. Like in Warhammer Fantasy, if I did a scenario where all of a sudden Aldorf was taken, 
no one would be happy with that. People would be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Aldor fell? That city? The city that's the heart of the Empire? The city that, without it, the Empire just crumbles? Like, no, 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 no. So, that's what I mean. Is that with this, gods can come back. It's immaterial. Anything could be lost. Anything could be gained. Anyone can rise. Anybody can be something. Which is so very good. Alright. Now, since I'm kind of stroking Sigmar a little too, too much, let's kind of stick a finger in its butthole. Let's, let's really give it a bit of a nip twist. The thing is that's so kind of bad about Age of Sigmar is that you see, let's talk a little bit about me, right? I'm a lore guy. I like lore. That's my thing. I love the books. I don't really play the game too, too much on tabletop. I'm just more of a lore guy. Age of Sigmar's lore is pretty crap. And the reason why is because it keeps sticking to Warhammer Fantasy, the end times. I'm not joking. It will not drop that dead fucking carcass of a story that everyone fucking hated. Honestly, if they just made Age of Sigmar and they didn't even give a context to it, it would have been better. It would have been awesome. It would have been amazing just seeing hordes of Skaven fighting alongside Chaos Boys, fighting against the Sigmarites, and you see a small god known as Ulrich, and you see him and his warriors savagely battling Sigmarites and battling Chaos, like, that would be cool. You don't need to explain anything, but instead they can't do that. They keep on dragging in characters from that time they keep dragging in the same stories and trying to continue the plot lines from the end time series that were just awful no one liked the end times i'm not joking no one liked it but yet they keep continuing it and it's in that continuation that it is really hurting age of sigmar like, if you just stuck with the concept of just gods waging war with each other and slowly build up stories of champions who rise to face the demons and demons of the warp who are now losing their favor because they're just not performing as well, they're like, oh my god, I've never fought a Sigmarite angel before. Now I'm no longer Azazel, the demon prince. I have lost my favor. I'm now being reduced to nothing, while some random demon, some random seductress, is having an amazing time fighting these Sigmarites to the point that she's now elevated to my previous standing. That is really where they should have stuck. They should have stuck with that. But, unfortunately, they can't drop the story of the end times. They keep carrying on the stupid fucking story of Teclas. And the stupid story of fucking the gash. Again, great characters of Warhammer Fantasy, but not great characters in Age of Sigmar, where all of a sudden they're literally gods. What why? Like what why? Why why are they all of a sudden got like, oh my god, that's just so bad. All they had to do is just drop it and just say, okay, here's the gods of the elves fighting the god of of death, more. Or more sleep, however you prefer to call them. Again, that would be much, much cooler. Now, back to the good side, though, is that, again, you can have very interesting scenarios in this lore. Like, you can have altars of forgotten power where other gods are fighting to claim it. And you may think, forgotten power, what What do you mean? This, this is a new scenario. Well, think of all the gods that have been forgotten. Think of, like, some Talayan god who is just sitting there with very little followers and he's only got like maybe a church in the middle of this humongous immaterial wasteland and now everyone's fighting to claim his church because they can take his power that would be awesome as fuck like me personally i have a giant blue sword it's a toy sword i cut it in half and i have a base plate on it and what i do is i put it on any map that i feel like and what I say is I say, this is the sword of Moor, the sword of the god of death. And the objective is to claim it. But the problem is, is that in this scenario, by you being next to the sword, and the sword is gigantic compared to your units, but by you being next to the sword, you have to roll a dice for a chance to take a wound. Because the sword will drain the souls of anybody near it. 
this, again, adds to the unlimited playability of Age of Sigmar. Unlike Warhammer Fantasy. Warhammer Fantasy, you see, has a much more stable environment. I can't do some crazy shit like that. Whereas Age of Sigmar, I can I can have all sorts of crazy ass shit happen. I could have it where all of a sudden the Fire Slayers decide to go ahead and fuck up Sigmar. Doesn't need a rhyme or reason. Doesn't need it at all. So now we have a whole event where just Fire Slayers are just storming in from the Firelands, breaching down the gates of Sigmarites, and they're just cleaving a path. And then from here we could have an event where it could be a three-way battle. Chaos is coming in and they see the Fire Slayers doing their shit and they're like, ooh, this is an opportunity for us to claim an objective in the uh, Sigmar territory. And then the Sigmar, who's double the number of the other two armies, their goal is to just hold two objectives at the same time. One, hold a large sack of gold because the Fire Slayers are trying to take it. And then on the other side, trying to hold an altar against Chaos, because if Chaos takes it, they'll have a foothold in their territory. It's like, oh my god, that is so amazing of an idea. That's so awesome to have this kind of scenarios. But, again, the downside is, is the lore. We don't, we really don't need Nagash and Teclas. We really don't. I get it why we have their models, because again, it would piss off a lot of players who spent hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars on this game. And now their models are useless. But we don't need their stories. We don't need Teclas to become a god. We don't need Nagash to become a god. Create something new. Do something cool. Because again, this series, I firmly believe Age of Sigmar should have been just a blank slate. It should have been just that. Just an empty slate of a high fantasy setting. Besides that, guys, I'm out. Peace. See you next time. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And maybe you guys now are probably looking at Age of Sigmar in a higher light. If you just disregard the lore, disregard the stories, it actually is very interactive, very fun to play. In fact, it's uh, more reactive than the other tabletops. It's kind of ahead of its of the other tabletops. It's more modernized, I guess you could say. But essentially now, if someone charges your units... You can roll a dice to react and step like two inches back so that way you don't get charged. It's stuff like that that is just very interesting to me. Because again, it's more reactive, more replayable, and it's more casual friendly. Whereas other versions are much harder to play. See you guys next time. Comment down below what you guys think. Maybe you guys hated Age of Sigmar, but now you see it the way I see it, where... It is entertaining value. I won't buy its story. I really do not give a shit about its story. But the setting is very interesting indeed. And the setting could be amazing if you play it that way. Besides that, this has been Free 700. I'm out. See you guys next time.